The Dynamic Save tool is a powerful tool that will allow users to output a single or set of images multiple different times to multiple different locations if required. Let's take a look at the tool. Right now we're in the image viewing area and I've selected six images from the thumbnail gallery as we can see that are highlighted by blue. I will select the Dynamic Save tool in the top right hand corner of the UI and this will open up the Dynamic Save dialog. What we're going to see inside of here is something like this. Output 1, and you probably won't see this output 2 yet if it's the first time opening it. So essentially what this tool is going to allow us to do is output this image, uh, pardon me, this image set as a batch selected images multiple different times. Now let's dive in and uh, kind of walk through the individual settings inside of here. Um, first one is going to be your master, master name. So this is a Nike shoe, I'm just going to call it Nike shoe. Now we do suggest to put a dash or an underscore after or a placeholder after this name because basically the naming is going to link up with the suffix name. The suffix is going to be optional. Then you'll also need sequential naming. Again, as we've selected multiple images here, um, they can't all be called Nike Shoe, so we're going to use sequential naming or else we can do a custom index or we can even do manual naming if required. Um, so we're going to give it a file name of Nike Shoe and that's going to be called our master name. Next thing we see here is output one. So this will be the first time that we output this image. Um, we're going to output to a folder that was specified that will be called my product images. We might give it a suffix as well here. So I'm going to call after our name um, Nike shoe. So it'll be Nike shoe dash. I'm just going to call this web. So this will be an image set that I output for my website. And what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to say, okay, we want to use sequential naming, so it'll be Nike Shoe dash web dash 01 through 06 for this entire set of images. Uh, the next thing that we're going to define inside of here is uh, the image format. We can choose JPEG, PNG, TIFF, WebP, or RAW. Just note if shooting RAW, you're going to have to have your, or if outputting RAW, you need to be shooting RAW with your camera, so ensure your camera set to JPEG plus RAW. Um, users can also define their quality settings um, for their image format uh, under JPEG. Um, we do have a slide bar, as you can see here, the quality. Um, if outputting for web, you can, you probably don't want to do 100. It's going to be a lot of information in that image that you probably won't need just because of web viewing constraints and monitor viewing constraints. We typically suggest right around 80 is pretty good. Um, users can also choose baseline or progressive. If you're not familiar with those, you can dive into our user guide and get a better understanding. And last, what we can do here is choose our resolution. 72 DPI is good for the web. Users can choose to resize. Um, let's just say we need our website images at a thousand pixels wide. So we're going to enter resize a thousand. We only wish to enter a width or a height, not both. Um, users can input both, but just note that if I put say a thousand by a thousand and my image is not a perfect square, it's going to skew that. Um, so we're just going to get rid of the height and it'll automatically scale that based on the 1000 pixels wide. Um, users can choose to apply a watermark. Uh, should you wish to do so, you'll have to create a watermark profile in the editing area. And then you'll, after creating that profile, you'll have it as an option in the drop dropdown. Um, next users can also, uh, add metadata to their image. For instance, maybe it's a copyright they wish to add. Um, users in the options area, this blue gear wheel, gear wheel up here, users can create a custom metadata profile and from the drop down they will see here, again I'd created one earlier, so I'm going to select to apply that custom metadata to all six images that I'm outputting. And then if you did have images that you uh, done some editing on and removed the background to transparent pixels and you're outputting that in an image format that does not support uh, transparent pixels such as JPEG, users can define what color those transparent pixels will be. So in this option, we don't have any transparent pixels, but just note that you can choose whatever color you want if, we're, if you did have an image with transparent uh, properties. So. That is our first output. Now let's pretend in the case here that we also want to save these images for a catalog. I'm going to choose new output. I'll hit this little plus icon here and you can see output to. And I click this little drop down arrow and that's going to pull up output to option. So um, we're going to call this a different suffix. Um, 
the first one is web. I'm going to call this print. And we're going to use our same sequential naming, 01. I'm going to output to the same folder. Uh, just note that if you wanted to create another, or create a master folder, uh, you can do so by clicking this and it will create a folder based on your suffix name. Uh, and then again here, maybe if we're outputting um, for print media, uh, we're going to choose TIFF file format. We're going to choose a 300 DPI resolution. And maybe we don't want to do any resizing to this image. And that looks good there. Um, and then again, what we can do is continue to add specific, uh, you know, output types. Maybe there's a third output type. Maybe we want, you know, thumbnail. And maybe for our thumbnail, we want to output it as, you know, 100 pixels wide. We could certainly do so inside of here. So right now we've just created three output types as we can see here. Um, one thing I should mention as well, if you didn't want to use the sequential naming, um, you could go ahead and do manual naming. So it would be something like, you know, image one, two, three, four, five, six. So my first angle is side view. Um, second one is front view. Um, so you can override the sequential naming by choosing manual naming if required, which you won't do. Uh, we'll just stick with the zero one sequential naming. Now that we've kind of created our dynamic safe profile, um, probably what users will want to do before actually outputting is save that profile. Uh, just so it's retained inside of the software. I'm just going to call it mic profile. We'll hit OK there. And it will be retained inside of here. And users can create multiple profiles too um, that you can easily access via this drop down. Now when you're ready to output, you just hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and output all those images. Um, this set of six images uh, three different times. Again, because we define three different output types in our dynamic save tool. And if I go into the folder, we're going to see here it's starting to output all the images. Um, again, resizing, um, reformatting, etc. So that's how the dynamic save tool works. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hes hesitate to reach out. Thank you.